Hey everybody, welcome to part two of my tutorial series on React, Redux, and Webpack. In this video we're going to be talking about some of the core concepts of React, uh, which are state and props. They're not too hard to understand, but they're important uh, moving forward as we compose uh, components and learn how they manipulate data and pass data around to each other. We'll also touch on JSX and we'll give probably a brief intro to Webpack and how we build up our components into one JavaScript file that we can run. So in this diagram I have drawn uh, in the orange squares uh, are representing two React components. Component 2 is going to be a child of component 1. Being a child of a component means that in the render, every component has a render function. And this function is um, our declarative way of describing how we want the component to look on the page. And so uh, when I say component 2 is a child of component 1, it means that within component 1's render function, we are displaying component 2. So every render function uh, needs a return statement. And you could return something like a div. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to return what looks like HTML syntax, but we're actually going to be um, returning component 2. Uh, and this is JSX syntax. So it might look a little weird that, uh, of course, this is kind of pseudocode, but it might be a little weird that we're kind of using HTML syntax uh, within JavaScript. And it is a little bit weird at first, but JSX basically uh, is a syntax that Facebook created for React. And what it stands for, I think, is just JavaScript XML-like syntax. And it's a way to um, write your components uh, in HTML-like syntax uh, as opposed to writing them in pure JavaScript. Ultimately, the JSX uh, gets compiled into your JavaScript. So although it looks weird at first, I urge you to use JSX. Uh, you'll see when we get more complicated trees and we have more components here, uh, it's much easier to see the outline and the tree-like structure of the HTML when you use JSX. Um, something like simply like this will get transcribed into something like react.create element and then this is a function that just takes in component 2 uh, and then other attributes that we're giving it which we'll get to in a minute. So let me remove all this stuff. Okay so component 2 uh, is a child of component 1. Uh, yeah so let's start talking about state and props. So State, um, as we talked about a lot in my last video, is one of the reasons React is so powerful is the way it handles state. Uh, so what is state? State is anything you're keeping track of uh, on the app. So this could be user data, um, it could be data from the server, it could be UI state, whatever you're keeping track of. Now in React, every component has its own state or can have its own state if you decide to start keeping track of something uh, in that component. So that's why I've drawn these two mm, teal-ish boxes. Um, so every component can have its state. Now you'll hear a lot about like state and props. So how are they related? So a prop is just a portion of state that is passed down from a parent component to a child component. So in this example, component one is the parent component and component two is a child component. So let's say on component one, we decide that maybe component one is some type of uh, toggle or some type of um, um, radio button type element where people can choose a color. Let's say they have a couple options like green, blue, and red. And so let's say, um, and, I get, and the state object is just a JavaScript object. Um, well, yeah, you can think of it as just a, uh, an object. 
So with properties. So we'll have a color property on component one state, and let's say it's green. So we've decided that component one is going to keep track of this color state on the app. Now, it might be that component two is some type of dialog box below it that describes their color choice as green or what have you. But component two would really like to know about the state uh, up here in component one. And so how do we do that? Well, we can pass it down as a prop. So a prop is just a portion of state that is passed down to a child component. So in this case, if we know that component two needs to know about the, the color state, uh, we pass it down. And using JSX, it gets passed down as what looks to be an HTML attribute. So instead of ending this here, we're just going to say color equals. And with JSX syntax, we use uh, curly braces to basically um, evaluate JavaScript within it. So we want the attribute color, which will, um, isn't really an attribute. It's actually a prop on component two. We want this prop to always be the same as the state here in component one. So it's going to be this. And this just refers to this whole uh, big component. So every component is basically uh, a big JavaScript object. Uh, and so when we're within it, we refer to it as this. And React does a really good job of uh, helping us bind uh, this when it needs to be bound uh, explicitly. So this dot state, state is a uh, property on the component dot color. We do a end curly brace, and we uh, and the component there, the uh, JSX syntax there. And so um, because we called this attribute color, component two, uh, inside the component, whether we are in a function uh, or a method on the component or we are within its own render function, we have access to this dot props dot color. And because, as I mentioned in my last video, anytime any state changes, React re-renders the whole app. Anytime this state changes up here in component one, let's say from green to red, React will re-render component one. It'll notice that color component two's color prop is based on this dot state dot color. So, well, that's different. So it'll then re-render component two's. Um, Via its via component two's render function, and if we were showing something like a div, uh, that was just the name of the color. Um, we use curly braces because we will still be using JSX syntax, uh, and we end the div, close out the div. Uh, it will pass that changed state up here down into um, the component two's props property and color will then update uh, immediately and it will then display red on the page in this uh, contrived example. Um, one other thing to add is that I named this state, I named it color and I named it color here but I didn't have to name it color here. Uh, I could have named this Mm, I don't know, prop example. And then down here, uh, we would have to change it to this.props.prop example. So you can name the prop whatever you want, um, uh, but you just have to make sure you're using the right uh, property name on state that you use up here. So that's about it for uh, state and props for now. In future videos, we'll get into maybe a little bit more of the paradigm of how you want to organize your state and props. In general, I'll give you a, a spoiler alert. Uh, I'll just give you a spoiler, I'm not alerting you. In general, you want to hold your state in parent components. You want to hold the state as high up as possible. Um, 
and then anything that needs it will be um, a child component. Uh, this allows components, as many components as you can, such as component two, to be quote unquote dumb components. And we're not trying to be mean here to these components, but what it means is component two isn't keeping track of any state. So a component that keeps track of state, like component one in this example, is kind of a smart component. It has to keep track of it, it has methods to update it, change it, etc. And what that means, it makes it much more specific to your specific app. Whereas if a component is just a dumb component, uh, it's not keeping track of state. It's, of course, rendering stuff based on the props it's getting sent, but everything else is doing all the work, and all this, compo this dumb component has to do is render. This makes it easier to test, and it also makes it easier to um, reuse components in other apps or other areas of your app. So that's about it for state and props for now. And in my next video, um, in my next video, we will get into uh, we'll actually start coding, which will be fun, uh, and we'll you know set up a couple components and we'll test out uh, how the state and props work together. Now, one other thing before we go into that and start coding, uh, I want to touch a little bit on Webpack and building an app. So. Um, I drew up this little diagram. Um, in general, um, a React app has one HTML file, the kind of the index.html. And you know, I'm leaving out a lot of stuff. I assume you probably know a little bit about HTML, but um, basically uh, there's the body. Within the body, the, the one thing you definitely need is a div to be the anchor point for the app. So when we actually when React actually renders your entire app onto the page, we're going to give it an anchor point. So we give it a div and it has an ID of app. That's where we're going to render it. And then in general, the best way to go about uh, implementing a React app is to include a script tag. And the script tag is going to point to what generally is called bundle.js. You could call it anything you want. But it's one JavaScript file that contains all of the JavaScript. It, contains all of the components and then um, and the anchor and the uh, actual anchoring to the the div with ID of app so what this means is that we have one file here the bundle.js which has all of our JavaScript but you can imagine that if we have a complicated app with you know tens to a hundred components we probably don't want to be writing every single thing on this bundle.js it'll just it kind of takes away from the composability and the modularity of having components. So you definitely are going to have a separate file for every one of your components. Um, the app, uh, in, this, in this case, um, in this simple example, I have an app component and this is just your basically the entire app. And then the render, com the render function of this app component contains a header and it contains a list. You know, we're eventually going to be making a to-do list among other things. And then each of these might contain uh, components. And so what we need is every time we run the app, whether it's on our development machine or in production, uh, we, need to, we need a tool that goes through, starts with your entry point or your main component, and then it follows everything that, it, that all of its child components, goes into those child components and basically pieces them all together into bundle.js. And there are a couple of tools to do that. One is called Browserify. And this is actually the one I started using uh, when I first started using React. Um, you know, at the time it was a little bit, I think, more mature of a project and it was pretty easy to set up. But the other one is Webpack. And although Webpack has a little bit of a more of a learning curve um, and it's a little bit newer, it's works really nicely with React and ES6, which we'll get into, uh, and Redux. So I would highly recommend you use Webpack. Um, so basically, uh, you know, without being able to go into too much detail at this moment, Webpack is the tool that you give it some configuration and it knows to look in, 
your top level component and then it goes through each of the child components and then child components of the child components and all the while builds up this bundle.js and uh, once that's built your uh, HTML can then load it and once the HT once the uh, well the browser reads it from the HTML loads it and once it loads it your react app is up and running and I think that's it for now uh, we'll get into a little bit more uh, about webpack I think in the next uh, video. In the next video, we're going to take a very, very basic uh, repository, very basic um, app structure, and we'll actually start coding and uh, writing a React app. So, see you then.